The next uh, would be EFD. Mrs. Andreasen, do you wish the floor? For two minutes, please. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mrs. Ashton, when the EAS was set up, there was debate about uh, the EAS replacing the national embassies. And I don't think the point was ever clarified. But today what people see is effectively that the EU budget has been increased by roughly an annual 500 million. And in return for that, they see expressions like a strong, stronger engagement in the Middle East. Now, this is a high cost for uh, this type of result. And I'm not being critical here because, of course, it's only the first year that we can evaluate. But at the same time, as you know, there are critical situations in the different member states. So people will be looking to this uh, very carefully. So my question is actually, is the EAS going to replace the uh, member states' embassies or not? I personally am not in favor but I want to know your response. And the second question I have is, if it were to replace uh, the national embassies, how would the EAS deal with national problems, you know, with conflicts that the Spain, for example, has in relation to Gibraltar or other type of things? Um, can you please clarify this? Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there a uh, Madam Andresen, the budget didn't increase by 500 million. The point was that that was bits of budget brought together. So it's not an increase, and it would be wrong to think of it like that. This is money that was in the old systems that came together uh, to create the service. And I don't think we should, um, we should be too worried about... Don't worry, I'm fine, don't worry. No, no. We should be too worried about the... Um, you know, when I said stronger engagement in the Middle East, well, I could have talked in greater detail about many of the things where I think... The, having the EAS makes a big difference. And if you ask member states that, they would say too. But the particular question you asked me is, are we going to replace member state embassies? And the answer is no. We are not a member state. We don't do what member states do. We do what the European Union does. Whether that's the coordinated approach to, to a common foreign policy, the views that we take through council conclusions, the work that we do through Parliament and the Commission, on everything from trade and climate change to how do we support countries through development, crisis management, and so on. All of this is what the European Union does that is distinct and different to what is done by member states. Um, that doesn't mean that countries, and Spain is a good example, don't want to, in some countries, bring their diplomats into working in the EAS, where countries are beginning to think about rationing or rationalizing where they have embassies. We have got the capacity in some places by bringing together some member states to create what might be called a Europe house or might be called something else, where you can have a number of member state embassies and the European Union, the External Action Service, operating together. Then that can be also a useful and cost-effective way of dealing with resources, and I encourage that. So we have got agreements with some member states to do that. Some places. We also have, for example, the European Investment Bank that is co-located with us in some parts of the world as well and with other services. So we do that, but that's not about closing embassies. It's not about taking over from member states because we don't. Um, and Mr. Uh, Edrenhauser, you asked me about...